What do a burger flipper, a lawyer, and a beetroot factory worker all have in common? They all went on to become football superstars. I'm talking household names like Neymar, Simon Mignolet, and Ricky Lambert. Before they were dominating pitches across Europe and starring on the biggest stages, they were working regular jobs just like the rest of us. In this video, we'll explore the captivating stories of 12 football legends who hustled 9 to 5s before achieving glory and fortune through the beautiful game. From bus drivers to electricians, pool cleaners to production Production line workers, you'll be shocked by the humble origins of some of today's biggest footballers. Our first footballer is one of the most famous in the world today, Neymar Jr. Can you imagine being served fries and a burger by this Brazilian superstar? Well, that's exactly what happened to some lucky kids in 2010. Back when he was still an up and coming teenage talent, Neymar spent a day working behind the counter at a Sao Paulo McDonald's. Just a normal guy serving up Happy Meals, right? Of course, we now know that Neymar was destined for far greater heights as one of the best players of his generation. But his humble one-day stint flipping burgers is a testament to the grounded mentality that supported his rise to the very top of the game. Don't we all wish we could have been one of those kids Neymar served back in 2010? Something tells us his McDonald's uniform may be worth millions today. If Simon Mignolet hadn't made it big as Liverpool's goalkeeper, he always had law to fall back on. While working his way up the ranks in Belgian football, Mignolet was studying law at the University of Leuven. In fact, he credits his academic pursuits for helping him cope with the pressures of being a top-flight keeper, keeping him grounded through all the ups and downs. Mignolet even considered practicing law after retiring from football. Can you just imagine defenders shouting, OBJECTION, every time he made a save? While he ultimately hung up his suit to focus on football full-time, it just goes to show the importance of keeping your options open. Education paved Minoulet's road to success on pitch and could have easily taken him to a successful law career if things had played out differently. If you had hopped on a bus in Barranquilla, Colombia around 2008, there's a chance your ticket was sold by none other than Carlos Baca. Trying to support his family while also progressing with local club Atletico Junior, Baca took on a job as a bus driver's assistant. Just imagine seeing his face smiling at you when you boarded to pay your fare. Of course, Baca wouldn't be stuck selling tickets for long. His goal-scoring talent soon earned him moves to Europe with Club Bruges, Sevilla, AC Milan, and more. They call him Psycho now, but Electrician might have been more fitting of a nickname for Stuart Pierce. During his early days trying to make it as a footballer, Pierce was still working full-time as a qualified electrician. He would even advertise his home electrician business while paying for Nottingham Forest. How's that for dedication? Juggling electrical work and professional football seems crazy, but it ensured Pierce had financial stability as he tried to rise up the ranks. And perhaps all that rewiring helped prepare him mentally for a successful career as one of England's toughest defenders. So next time you get shocked plugging in a light, blame Stuart Pierce. His story shows that sometimes you need grit and a blue-collar work ethic to achieve your wildest dreams. Gifted with one of the most elegant left feet in football history, Chris Waddle moved with effortless skill and control. It's hard to imagine his fancy footwork while decked out in factory gear. But before mesmerizing fans with his flair in France, Waddle had to work long hours in a food processing plant while struggling to achieve his football breakthrough. After failed trials with Sunderland and Coventry City, he finally earned his chance with Newcastle United at age 19. The rest is history. Crazy haircuts, pop songs, and all. Chris Waddle's long road reminds us that behind every successful footballer is years of thankless work and tireless belief. For Waddle, applying his trade on the factory floor built the foundation that catapulted his legend. He left that plant behind to reach football's heights, never forgetting where he came from. Talk about rags to riches. Jamie Vardy emphasizes the underdog story. While Leicester City was charging to their miraculous league title, just years before, Jamie Vardy was earning 30 pounds a week playing non-league football. To supplement his minuscule football income, he worked long hours as a technician producing medical splints. Vardy recalls working through back pain and exhaustion before ringing in sick to attend football sessions. Dedication, perseverance. Now the record breaker and Premier League champ laughs about performing manual labor alongside PL foes that came up through posh academics. Jamie Vardy overcame all the odds and obstacles through sheer force of will, a true working man hero. Before blasting screamers past Premier League keepers, Charlie Austin was laying bricks for his dad's construction company. Yup, the on-loan QPR striker worked full-time as a bricker before injury troubles granted him an opportunity with Swindon Town. Once Austin got his big break, his stock rose rapidly from lower league scorer to 20-goal Southampton striker 
hiker. Still, those early days getting his boots muddy on work sites built a foundation of grit that took Austin right to the top flight. But before we continue, we would like you guys to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell icon so you don't miss out on any amazing and entertaining content. What, what are the, the odds? odds of meeting the same superstar footballer twice in completely different settings? Well, Craig Noon had a pretty unbelievable story about crossing paths with Steven Gerrard. Before making his ascent to Cardiff City Premier League fame, Noon was working as a roofer while playing semi-professionally. And what roofing gig did he land back in the day? None other than Steven Gerrard's house. Talk about awkward scenes when the two faced off as PL opponents years later. Gerrard surely gave his former roofer a fiery Merseyside welcome. But we love the serendipity of Noon's incredible connection. Makes you wonder what future footballer stars might your roofer or plumber grow into. They say unemployment can crush hopes and dreams. But for Edward Mendy, even long-term joblessness couldn't derail his destiny between the sticks. After being released from lower league Cherbourg, Mendy spent an entire year without a club. He became so disillusioned that he registered as unemployed and pondered giving up football altogether. Thankfully, third-tier Marseille took a chance on him as their fourth-choice keeper. Mendy's self-belief kicked back into gear. Through sheer hard work, he transformed into the imposing giant we now recognize from last season's incredible Champions League run. Never doubt the power of perseverance. Edward Mendy went from unemployed scraps to FIFA's best goalkeeper in just a few whirlwind years. Junior Messias has trade experience few footballers share, humping heavy appliances up and down stairs. Not so long ago, the tricky Brazilian winger was playing amateur football while working odd delivery jobs to support his family in Italy. Can't you just imagine him stepping over defenders with a fridge strapped to his back? From those humble beginnings, lugging white goods, Messias achieved the ultimate come up scoring the winning Champions League goal to down Atletico Madrid and now calling San Siro home as Serie A champion. Talk about major appliance delivery. He hauled himself up from little rock bottom to join Europe's footballing elite. Now that's something worth raising a cold celebratory drink to. Salute Junior Messias. Standing at six foot five, you can't miss towering Welsh striker Keith Moore. But he had to grab attention through scoring goals, not stature while playing early football. To stay fit and earn extra cash, Moore worked as a lifeguard and personal trainer while starring for Truro City and other lower league clubs. Makes you wonder how many vacation-style rescues he performed between banging in headers. Of course, Moore would soon parlay that athletic proudness into Welsh national fame and ultimately the Premier League with newly promoted Bournemouth this coming season. But we shouldn't forget those long days pacing poolside and keeping swimmers safe that shaped Moreland into the complete package striker he is today. Consider us signed up for Hitman Keeper's training sessions. Don't forget your swimsuit. Before starring in the rags to riches England dream story, Ricky Lambert had more humble beginnings working at a beetroot bottling plant. Making just 20 pounds a day sticking lids on jars was the only factory work he could get after being released from Liverpool's academy at 15. Thankless manual work clearly spurred Lambert's ambitions. He eventually rose to the league before returning to Anfield as a saint to remind Liverpool of his class. Now that's how to make an epic comeback. Ricky Lambert never gave up belief even as the beetroot factory threatened to crush his confidence. Perseverance through tough work built Lambert's path to fame and fortune. And we bet Liverpool wish they could clamp down the lid on that transfer oversight now. How's that for beetroot sweet revenge? Who was your favorite working class hero? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, exploring the humble origins of famous footballers, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an upload. Make sure to ring the bell icon too to turn on notifications and stay updated every time I post a new video.